What I'm going to do here today is show you how I edit a podcast from beginning to end in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, of course, you can use Adobe Audition, DaVinci Resolve, iMovie, any other thing as well. And the reason why I'm using Premiere Pro for this one is because we recorded it over Zoom, which, which means we have the video. So I was thinking, well, maybe I'll edit in Premiere Pro and use some of the video clips and throw them out for social media. Or maybe in your case, you want to use the video and put it on YouTube or something like that. So that's a reason to edit a podcast in a video editing instead of straight up audio. Since I did record using Zoom, uh, what I did is I made sure I had my Zoom settings set so that that way I was recording two separate audio tracks, one for myself and one for the other person that I was doing the podcast with. I think this is really valuable rather than recording them all on one track because it will allow you to just individual levels or in those situations where people are talking over each other, then in those situations you can maybe drop one person's audio track versus the other. So I've imported everything into Premiere. I've got my two audio tracks that I want, and I've got my Zoom video one that I want. This is just gonna be an audio track of uh, flat, everything together on one, so I don't really need that. I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna go Merge Clips. And let's see, this is episode 19. And just leave everything that defaults and hit OK. All right, it created my new one. I'm gonna drag and drop it onto my timeline. So I've got three tracks here. The first one is going to be that merged one of the from the video. And the second two and third one are going to be myself and the other person I'm speaking with. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And I'm going to just do a quick sound check and make sure everything is synced correctly. With this whole episode. Yeah, totally. It'll be like the least 20 episodes. Perfect. So everything's synced. Now I'm going to mute my first track. I do want to keep it though, and it comes in handy sometimes maybe if you need a backup or something happens to one of the other two. Something I'll even do as well is I'll actually record audio completely separate through say like a separate audio recorder that I might plug in to my laptop and then that way it's completely separate from the Zoom recording as a backup and I have had to use that in the past so that's just a useful tip there in regards to backing up audio so you don't have to re-record things. All right, there are a few effects that I'm gonna add before I start doing any of my editing. The three main ones I'm gonna do are a D-reverb and a speech volume leveler and a max peak. So I'm just gonna to go to my effects palette and type in D-reverb. And that one I'm gonna to leave to the default. It's not really gonna change a whole lot. It helps remove some of the room echo that you get from, you notice that we're in solid rooms. I'm on a microphone, he's not and uh, there's no real padding or anything around us, so it helps a little bit of that echo. The next thing I'm gonna do is my dynamics. Now this one, I am going to adjust some of the settings. So in my effect control, I want to go dynamics, edit, and under compressor, I'm gonna change that to 17. As you can see, it's around negative 20 dB. There was another YouTube video out there where the person showed some calculation, how he came about this. So if it's around minus 20 dB, put 17 dB in the makeup. Why? I don't know, but it seems to work pretty well. The other one is gonna be the limiter, and I wanna limit that to minus three. You could keep it at minus one or go minus two. I wouldn't change out of that. That's just gonna um, limit that volume threshold. So you're gonna to need to do this for each of the tracks. So that was for three, and this one's for two. And I'm gonna do it for track one, just in case I need to make some kind of an adjustment or I need to cut over to that track for some reason. That way I have it and it's done. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit G on my key, is I'm gonna hit G on my keyboard and that's gonna bring up audio gain. I'm gonna normalize all peaks to minus three as well. Same setting that I used in the dynamics. Hit okay. What that's gonna do is it's gonna to try to normalize the speech volume here to that minus three dB level. Over here on the right, you wanna to try to keep your volume you know, anywhere between, like I said, minus one, minus two to minus six. Minus three is a good number in my opinion. I'm sure there's other YouTube videos out there that might say something different. Okay, now that I've got everything set the way I want it, I'm gonna start my editing. So I'm gonna double click 
on each of the audio tracks. And since this is a podcast, I need to find where I actually want my podcast to start and delete everything before that. Welcome to the 80s, 90s, and... Okay, I found my intro. I'm going to delete everything that happens before that because that's just us chatting. Sometimes I put that in there. Sometimes I don't. It's kind of up to you. Sometimes people might like to hear a little bit behind the scenes. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add some intro music. Always a good idea to have some kind of an intro for your podcast. I shouldn't say it's always, maybe. Depends on who you talk to. In my case, I'm just going to grow from a, another episode where I know I've already got the intro music set to where I want it. And as you can see with the volume, it starts off loud and then kind of lowers down as the show starts. That's why I am grabbing it from that episode rather than just placing it new and resetting it because you can see it's already done. I don't have to worry about it. Welcome to the 80s, 90s Uncensored, the podcast about the 80s, 90s for people who care about that crap. And I'm just letting the music fade out. Next thing I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start cleaning up the noise, removing background, removing filler words, breast sounds, that kind of stuff. And you'll see what that means when we get to that. So as they all, especially in the 80s, like any of those 80s toys had a TV show, G.I. Joe, Transformers. Now, notice here, etc. he starts speaking as I'm speaking, and it just kind of sounds weird. This is kind of that some of that weird stuff that you don't necessarily want in your podcast, especially if people are doing an audio version only. They are more prone to hearing that. So how I deal with this is I'm going to just click once, click twice, click another time, and click four. So I've got four keyframes. And I'm just going to drop the volume right there where he's Cedra, Turtles, Wallace. Thundercats. Yeah. It's like um, you couldn't have a. Yeah. They Notice again, I start talking, but then I kind of stop. In this case, I'm going to cut all of that out. So I'm just hitting key on my keyboard, bringing up my blade tool, bringing up my blade tool. And deleting that. Yeah, they all did. And it's so hard to, it was hard to find toys that weren't. That time I'll let us talk over each other. Other things I'm going to look for here. Notice we've got these little background noises. This is room noises. This is things like people smacking on their desk or their microphone. I'm going to, I want to get rid of that kind of stuff too. That's any of those random distracting noises. Just get rid of. And once again, I'm just control clicking on my keyboard here to drop that down. Breathing in, a large breath in. Now we can get rid of that. Um, so yeah, so we, we came up with Don't need those ums. That's the filler words. Think about that. Sometimes you do want to have ums and uhs and that kind of stuff, but you don't want too much of it because it becomes distracting. So think about those filler words, those things that are going to be that we all use in speaking, especially when we don't want there to be pauses or silence, we tend to use a lot of filler words. Pay attention to those and get rid of those. There's another thing that I'm looking for right here. So notice, <laughs> nice big breath in that uh, we often take before we start speaking. So I don't want that. There's a couple different ways you can deal with this. In this one, I'm just going to delete it. But let me find another one. Because sometimes it's okay to have breaths. So here's another Inch. one. In this case, instead of actually deleting it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the volume of it so that way it's not quite as noticeable. So um, it's still in there, but you notice I'm not dragging that all the way down this, all this other crap. So it's still there, but it's a bit quieter. Because once again, we do use breaths when we speak. Now that I've really called it out, you probably notice it for the rest of this video every time I do it. And so the last thing you want to look for is a necessary dialogue. You want your show to be as short and to the point as possible and get rid of a lot of just nonsense crap. I know we all think everything we say is brilliant and hilarious and genius, but it actually isn't. And so when doing a podcast, you really want to make sure that you've got all the important stuff in there and none of the crap that people aren't going to want to listen to. 
And something else to think about too is people tend to repeat themselves a lot when they're talking. So we might be saying something and later on in the show say the same thing again. So maybe decide, do you really need that repetition? Here's something else to look for too. When we're talking and we're letting somebody else talk after us or in between us, we might get a little bit of a pause. So cut those out. It's cube cartoon. Pause. We don't really need that. We can actually just tighten that up a little bit. And once again, when people are hearing this, it's going to sound a little snappier, a little quicker. It uh, just kind of improves the quality of the show a little bit. All right, here's an example of what I'm talking about with people uh, speaking over each other and cutting out repetitive stuff. So you notice I'm talking Pac-Man. Pac-Man, Pac so like, oh, Pac while he's saying something. Oh, something's popular. Make a cartoon quick. Come yeah. Back. People like this video game called Pac-Man. I bring up Pac-Man again. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to drop mine entirely. So that way we can just hear what he's saying. <laughs> That's the 80s though. They're like, oh, something's popular. Works better so you can actually hear it. I'm letting him finish. And then I'm saying my thing about Pac-Man. People like this video game called Pac-Man. Let's play some, make a cartoon about it. Quick, hurry. Here's a tip if you are planning to release this as a video podcast, and that is throw some content on the screen here. Uh, a good thing, especially if you're talking about, like in this case, we're talking about toys. So he mentions. So I had the Alfie 2. The Alfie 2. So what might be a good idea here would be to throw actually a picture of the Alfie 2 on the screen, give some visuals to keep people interested in the video. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm just using the audio from this. I'm not going to necessarily use the video. Okay, so I'm done with my edit. As you can see, there's a lot of cuts. There's a lot of adjustments in volume, so there's quite a bit to it. Generally recommend that you go through it twice, do once, and then go back through it again and really tighten it up as much as you can. And after during your outro, maybe a little outro music is always right. nice. And once again, I'm just going to wrap it up like I did before. And as always, 80s and 90s Uncensored listeners. Okay, so we've got the edit done. I've got all my cuts. I've got my volumes adjusted. I've got it the way I like it. Last thing is, of course, to do an export. To export, just grab the project, right-click, go Export Media. It'll bring up your export settings. So you've got two options here. The default one is going to be a to export it as a video. So if you're exporting the video, uh, I generally recommend H.264 and matching at high bitrate. This will work for YouTube or whatever. In this case, I'm not going to do the video. I'm just using the audio. So I'm going to switch it down to MP3. I'm going to pick a 256 kbps high quality rate. And then I'm going to hit export. From here, it's going to export the project. And I can upload it to whatever podcast playing platform it is I want to use. If you're subscribed to this channel, you know that this video is a bit longer than most of my other ones, but it is a bit longer because it's going from a beginning to end type of an edit. As always, hope you found it useful and have a good day.